All right, so now we have absolute value equations and inequalities part two. What about this situation? So the absolute value of x plus two is equal to negative three. Well, you're looking for numbers that when you plug in for x, uh, and you take the absolute value of them, you want their, you're going to get equal to negative three. Well, no matter what number we plug in for x, this left-hand side here of the equal sign is always going to be what number? What type of a number? A positive number because the absolute value means distance, and distance is going to give us a positive value. So there's no number we can plug in here for x that's going to make this a true statement. It says there's no solution to this particular equation. It's kind of important to realize. So don't just mindlessly start going about the two separate equations. Make sure you understand you, that you can even solve this equation. And so the an absolute value equal to a negative number it's just not going to have a solution. Same situation down here. If you have the absolute value of an expression that's less than negative 5, you can't have a number whose distance from 0 is less than negative 5. That doesn't make any sense. So again, this is no solution. And then down here for C, we have the absolute value of an expression is greater than negative 2. So if we're looking for numbers whose distance from 0 is greater than negative 2. Well, no matter what number you plug in for x, you're going to subtract 1 from it. Um, but in the end, you're going to take the absolute value on that left side, and that left side's always going to be a positive number, or 0. Because if x is 1, 1 minus 1 would be 0, and the absolute value of 0 is 0. And all of those numbers are greater than negative 2. So here, all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity, is the solution. Any real number will make this a true statement, because you have the absolute value greater than a negative number. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, one more thing. All right, a little note. Say A and B are algebraic expressions, like 2x plus 5 or whatever, like we've been playing with. Then in order to solve this equation, the absolute value of, uh, of an expression is equal to the absolute value of another expression. If we have that equation set up, then we end up solving um, this expression, A, equal this expression, B, because if those two things are equal, then their absolute values are certainly going to be equal. And we're going to end up solving A is equal to the opposite of B, because if that's true, the absolute values of those things would also both be true. All right, so here's an example. Solve the absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals x minus 2. All right, so we have an absolute value equal to an absolute value. So that means the expressions inside the absolute values, if they were equal, then this would certainly be a true statement up here. Or, if 2x plus 1 was equal to the opposite of the other expression. Notice I put parentheses in there because it's the opposite of this entire expression, x minus 2. If that's a true statement, um, then the absolute values would also be a true statement. All right, so then you solve each one. So you get x equals, what is it, negative 3. Subtract x from both sides, you get x. Subtract 1 from both sides, you get negative 3. And over here, you have 2x plus 1 equals negative x plus 2. So we get 3x equals 1. So x is equal to 1 third. So if x is negative 3, this is a true statement. And if x is 1 third, this is a true statement. All right, makes sense? OK, so just make sure that you understand these concepts for absolute value equations, absolute value inequalities, uh, and uh, how to write them algebraically, and it will make things quite a bit easier uh, to solve. All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.